a peaceful dialogue between a Hindu and a Muslim. Invite, O Messenger, to the religion of Islam, you and the believers who follow you, in a manner that is appropriate for the condition. Understanding and mindset of the person who you are inviting and with admonition that contains encouragement and caution. Argue with them in the manner that is best in terms of speech, thought and politeness, for it is not your duty to guide people. You are only required to convey the message to them. Your Lord knows best who has strayed from the religion of Islam and he knows best those who are rightly guided to it, so do not lose yourself in grief over them. And now, 12, 125. A quiet dialogue between a Hindu and a Muslim. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, creator of the heavens and the earth, maker of darkness and light. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone and he has no partner. Also, I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is his slave and his messenger. O Allah, invoke blessings and peace on the Prophet Muhammad, the seal of prophets and messengers, as well as his wives, his best and clean family. His respectful companions and the followers of his guidance, path and his footstep to the day of recompense. Verily, whoever contemplates about the teachings of Islam, its message and its call will know its full compatibility and perfect suitability for the pure instinct. All these characteristics let the clean souls and normal minds look forward to it. They are illustrated by these questions, which one of the Hindus asked and reasonable logical answers presented by Islam on the tongue of a Muslim as follows. Question 1, Hindu, perhaps, you see what the Western media is publishing and promoting by imputation against Islam and Muslims with different types of extremism and terrorism. What is your comment on that? Answer 1, Muslim, Islam is very far from any form of extremism and terrorism and is innocent of any act contrary to its open-minded teachings even if that action happened from the hand of who claims Islam. It is sufficient for you to know that the word, Islam, itself refers to, peace, security and tranquility because. It is derived from the source peace, which is also derived from the word submit, which means, security, safety and reassurance. Therefore, Islam is the religion of peace that can be enjoyed by all, all under its umbrella of peace, security, safety without injustice, oppression and tyranny. Almighty Allah says, he who slays a soul unless it is in punishment for murder or for spreading mischief on earth shall be as if he had slain all mankind. By Islam. A person enjoys inner psychological and real peace because he will become safe in his belief in Almighty Allah, God. So his soul and mind will find tranquility and his body parties will be in the light of Islam's message by high guidance and teachings. Question 2, Hindu, therefore, what is the meaning of Islam? Answer 2, Muslim, Islam means, complete submission, surrender and obeying by mind, heart, spirit and body to Almighty Allah's commands. Therefore, the slave should comply with his brain, he should believe in the existence of exalted and almighty Allah. He should believe in his oneness, his great power and his unique divinity. He should not have a partner with him and should not believe in his God and his creator except what suits his greatness. He must not think about him except everything that is great and glorious without any injustice, deficiency or reduction. Also, a person should obey with his mind and soul with love to his exalted God and with reverence, respect and appreciation to him. The slave should comply with his body following the commands of Almighty God and avoiding wrongful acts. That compliance should be from the created slave with love to his God and Creator hoping to get his satisfaction and expecting to get his paradise with its great lasting stable enjoyment and with fearing for exalted Allah's anger anticipating to be saved from his hellfire with a severe painful torment. Question 3, Hindu, to what does Islam call? Answer 3, Muslim, Islam came with the pure doctrine that inspired the minds and guided them to know the Creator and the Maker with clear knowledge which suits His majesty and greatness. It calls to everything that can be accepted and agreed with pure instinct, stainless spirit and the right mind. It came for Kalinto pure creed without any impurities or turbidity that can irritate the mind, disturb it or prevent it from understanding or accepting it. It calls to the pure belief accepted by the rational mind without coercion or imposing certain unacceptable perception. It calls talk. Believing in the existence of God, Almighty Allah, the unity of his divinity and disassociating him from rejected qualities of vice, imperfections, defects and all that he does not deserve and having faith in his great qualities and unrestrained ability. Believing in the cherished angels as one of the greatest creatures of God. Allah created them for the worship, obedience and the implementation of his orders, so they do not disobey him at all. He did not give them options to choose obedience or disobedience. It is among these angels who were entrusted with revelation. 
some of them were charged with receiving the mandates, orders, prohibitions, directives and teachings of Almighty God and conveying them to those who have been chosen by God to be his prophets and messengers, so that they may report to people what they received, through the angels such as trusts, instructions and teachings. Believing in Almighty Allah's prophets and messengers and honoring them because they were chosen among the humans by exalted Allah to spread his call and message also to introduce people's creator and God to them and to call them to believe in him and his oneness of divinity. Furthermore, they are sent to guide people to Allah's worship as he wants from them, as required by the perfection of his wisdom and will, through the implementation of his teachings and orders. Believing in the last day, which is the day when people will be raised up after their death to ask them about their beliefs and deeds and hold them accountable. Whoever does a small good deed will find its reward and recompense and whoever does an atom of evil will be held accountable. Believing in the bad or good destiny, that is to say everything that happens in this universe and what is being exposed to man either good or evil such as happiness and sadness. Wealth and poverty including health and disease. It is with the prior estimation from Almighty God, according to the completeness of his wisdom and as required by Almighty's will, and his full awareness because he is all-knowing and the most. Expert. It calls to the guiding acts of worship, in which the human soul is purified and cleansed of vices, malicious acts, obscene morality and condones. It will rise to the highest standards of morality and the lofty levels of charity. It calls to sound laws, wise practices, and elevated teachings which let all human life be upright. It calls to knowledge, study and to what let humanity advance in areas of life. It calls to all goodness and the way guiding to the performance of good deeds and prevents from all evil and paths that lead to it. It calls to justice, charity and keeping relationship with relatives and forbids injustice, oppression, obscenities and evils. It calls to honoring the human and securing his life. It calls to respecting women in all stages of their lives starting from the period of their birth and childhood, that's to say since they are babies till they grow up and become bride, as well as passing through their marriage stage, as wives, to their maternity period, as mothers and grandmothers. It calls to having interest in raising children and encouraging on having compassion and mercy for them. It calls to caring for the youth. It calls to pitying and having mercy for other creatures, animals, birds, trees, plants. It calls to the use of wisdom, fine preaching. Mental logical and reasonable dialogue with the people of other religions to call them to believe in Almighty Allah the Creator and His oneness divinity in addition to not having a partner with Him. It calls to dealing with non-Muslims nicely. It calls to unity, solidarity, harmony, love and mercy. It calls to leniency in the wars. The wars of Muslims against enemies had been either for repulsion to their aggression or defending their religion, Islam. Also, they are for securing the Islamic call or against those who distort its image and falsify its truth and hinder between them and the call to it and preaching its message to people and introducing its teachings to them. However, verily, Islam forbids Muslims in their wars to have treachery, betrayal or killing children, women, non-combatants, powerless and elderly people. In addition, it prohibited the killing of those who surrendered and those who did not carry weapons, who do not fight Muslims. Furthermore, it disallows the destruction of houses, cutting of trees, demolition of cities and any kind of corruption on the ground. Islam is based on mercy and forgiveness, and from there we see justice in dealing with, people, and humanity in fighting. It calls to the good treatment of prisoners of war. It calls to peace, its components, its causes and the fulfillment of the promises and covenants but does not preach to extremism and terrorism. Question 4, Hindu, why does Islam call to monotheism? Answer 4, Muslim, initially, Islam has come to call people to believe in the creator of this universe, God the Maker, the exalted Almighty Allah. As every existing must have its maker and does every product. Therefore, every creature has its own creator. So, from there, he should believe in the existence of his God and Creator even if he cannot see him. However, the effects and evidence of its existence are more than to be enumerated. For instance, a person does not see his soul but believes in its existence because of seeing its effects in life as well as his brain but he believes in its existence due to its effects of having the capability. For thinking and meditation. In addition, he does not see gravity but he believes in its existence because of its effects of attraction. And so forth. The signs, effects, and evidence of the existence of the Creator, God, are incountable. With the addition that Islam has come to call for the glorification of Almighty God the Creator, the belief in His great qualities, the perfection of His wisdom, the comprehensiveness of His knowledge and unlimited power. 
All of these necessitate for Islam to call to believe in the oneness of Almighty God and His uniqueness in His divinity. Moreover, since the Creator God is only one God, He alone has the disposition of this universe and no one else is like that. Therefore, there is only one God Almighty Allah. Question 5, Hindu, what indicates that God, the Creator and Preserver of the universe, is only one God and not two, three or more? Answer 5, Muslim, before I answer you, I would like to ask you. Did you know that the Hindu scriptures agree with Islam that there is only one God alone in the divinity? Hindu, how is that? Muslim, the scriptures of the Hindus have stated in many places that God is only one God, not two. Among these places, book, Upanishad, Chandu Japat, 6 section, 2 number, 1, where it says, Ikam Eva Dityam, a quote in Sanskrit means, God is one and not two. Book. Upanishad, Svetasvatara part 6, number 9, where it says, Nakasha Kekasi Janita Kadahiba. It means, there are no other gods with this god, that is to say, there are no parents for him. He is the supreme god, and there is none above him. There are many other places where Hindu scriptures state that God is only one God. Also, the evidence of his oneness is abundant. Among of them. 1. Nature evidence, every child is born on the instinct of believing in his creator and originator including the unity of his divinity. The evidence is that if he is born and left till he becomes aware and conscious without any external influence in his belief. We will find that his nature which he was created on by God tends to believe in its creator and its maker. From there, that, nature, will lead him to the belief that there is only one God, the powerful greatest God who is capable of creating him and all creatures. We find him, the man who has become aware and conscious, at the time of his urgencies and need calling him. My God, my Lord, my Creator, referring to singularity in divinity rather than dualism or pluralism. Guide me ease my condition, provide my needs for me do not forsake me and we will never see him saying. O oh my gods, lords or those who created me, referring to pluralism, which indicates that the creator and originator is only one God and he is almighty God. 2. If a man asks, who created and originated him? Who created all these creatures and brought them to being? The logical answer will be that whoever created and originated him and all these creatures must be the greatest and most powerful God who is described in his capacity for creation. He will repeat this question differently as follows, who created this God and brought him into existence? On the assumption that the answer is there must be another God described by power and greatness. He will find himself compelled to repeat that question in an endless way and in the same way, who also created and originated this God? Thus, the same answer will be repeated without reaching a correct basic answer because the answer from the beginning was wrong and illogical. The ideal answer to this question is that there is no creator for this creator God who created this human being and originated this universe as well as all its creatures and beings. Hence, there is only one God who is described with great unrestrained power. This is the typical and logical answer that the rational and sensible brain will not accept anything other than it. ACI explained earlier that since the creator God is only one, he alone has the disposition of this universe and no one else is like that. Therefore, there is only one God, Almighty Allah, who deserves to be worshipped alone. 3. Assuming the presence of more than a God and then each has his autonomic will. For instance, if one of them wants to do something and others want other things, as if someone wishes to move something and the rest do not want to do so, what will happen then? The answer to this question, which was the result of the imaginary assumption, will not be out of three possibilities as follows. a. Either happening the will of each of them and that is a bad claim because it is rationally impossible b. and either be unable to all of them to implement his wish. That is also an invalid claim because the description of the deficit is impossible for the creator God who can do everything. c. or the will of one of them only comes to true and neither the rest wills. Therefore, he is the true God that can do everything while others are not gods at all. By repeating this assumption, it will appear that there is only one true God. He is Allah the creator of everything, who has the conduct of this universe and who can do whatever he wants. 4. If there is more than one God, at times some of them will surpass others and sometimes some have victory upon the others. As a result, the heavens and earth will spoil and then the destruction of the universe including creatures and all that exists in it as well as the life of whole mankind. Since all these did not happen but we find that this universe is very balanced and uniformed. Then, there is only one God.
he is the most powerful, greatest, capable God, and controller of everything. He is the exalted Almighty Allah. For instance, if there is a chance to win the ruling and dominion of a country, we will find a dispute and war including killing. Disaster and destruction after trying of opposition parties to get the ruling and dominion lonely. Therefore, instability will begin until the arrival of one of them to the post alone and stability of his dominion. Also, what about if there is more than one president for a country? Will there be stability in this country? Of course, it is no. There is no doubt that there will be disputes between them, in addition to the consequent waste, loss of the capabilities of that country and lack of progress. Therefore, we find that the whole state will agree to let someone be its king or president. As well as it is for this universe including its creatures and living things. The only creator of it is one God. He is the most powerful, greatest, capable God and controller of everything. 5. Assuming that there is a slave owned by only one person and he obeys his boss and implements his orders and specific instructions without the smallest floundering. If he is sold to more than one person, will his condition be upright and stable while he is trying hard to follow their instructions? Of course, no because in his first state, when he was owned by only one person, he could find himself concentrated with rest of mind and soul winning the consent of his master and enjoying his compensation. However, in his second condition, when it is owned by more than a person, he will find himself confused, sad and loser of satisfaction of his masters and tortured with their punishments for him because of the difference and clash of his boss's orders. Therefore, he will find himself compelled to obey and follow the instructions of one of them. At the same time, he has to disobey and ignore others' commands. At times, he may try to please all of them but at last, he will become negligent and disobedient deserving their wrath and punishments. As well, so where will that weak slave go if there are many gods and their commands and instructions clash? Who should he follow and submit to? Then, if he obeys one of those gods and gets his consent, he will become disobedient to others, so he deserves their anger and punishment. Surely, this, example, also confirms that the Creator, most powerful, greatest, capable and the controller of everything who deserves to be worshipped must be only one God who is the exalted Almighty Allah. Question 6, Hindu, why does Islam say that believing in more than one God is the biggest sin? Answer 6, Muslim, that is because the exalted Almighty Allah he is the true God and any God other than him is false and fake, absolutely, he is not a God. There is a difference between the existing thing and non-existing one as well as there is a difference between the creator and creature and the originator and what he originated. There cannot be equality between the two opposite kinds of stuff whatsoever. Therefore, claiming that there is more than one God is counted as the biggest oppression and injustice because there is in it a transgression of the greatest right of Almighty Allah. He is the only one God who did not bear a child and he was not born, the true God who is alone in his divinity. That can be illustrated through these examples. Can any sultan or king allow anyone to have a dispute with him in his power and ruling? Certainly, no. Can any jealous, arrogant and sensible husband agree with another man to share his wife? Surely, no. If a person has a maid and he pays her in exchange for her time and exertion for his service alone, will that, person, allow her to spend her time and effort to serve another person? Undoubtedly, no. If that is the condition of a creature who does not allow anyone to share his right with him. What about the originator-creator God who possesses everything and has the conduct of this universe lonely? Will Almighty Allah accept that anyone have clash with him, without any right, in his greatest right, divinity and deity, and become a partner with him in his control and creating? Certainly, no because he is more jealous of his rights than his creatures on theirs. Therefore, his first and greatest right upon his creature is to accept his existence, the unity of his divinity, his huge bounty and virtue upon them. Question 7, Hindu, why does Islam prohibit photographing Allah in the form of photos and statues? Answer 7, Muslim, at this point, also, before answering you I would like to ask you. Did you know that the Hindu scriptures are in conformity with Islam on forbidding the depiction of God in the form of photos and statues? Hindu, how is that? Muslim, the Hindu scriptures have stated this issue in many places. The following are parts of them, book, Obanishad Svita Swatara 1 part, 4 number, 19, where it says, Na Tasia Barathema Asti. This means. 
that god has no barathema. Barathema is a Sanskrit word meaning, symbol, image, drawing. Description, statue, fetish and face picture. That is to say, God has no any one of these descriptions. This, statement, is confirmed in other many places such as in Yajurveda part, 32 number, 3. In addition to what I have mentioned, Islam has called to the glorification of Almighty Allah the Creator's attributes and disqualified their diminution through description or making his photograph in form of stones and statues because it does not make sense that Almighty Allah created man from nothing then he made different statues depicting his God and Creator in different forms, whereas he did not see him, and then another person portrayed his God and Creator in other forms, images and so forth. Also, we surely see that such pictures and statues with different shapes and sizes are the cause for the human soul to glorify them, especially if they have enormous size and awesome scenery, then they worship them over the time. There are lots of examples of this situation in many countries. After that, they call another creature instead of true Allah who deserves to be glorified and worshipped alone. Almighty Allah is the present creator who the kingdom of everything is in his hand, the only controller of everything and anything other than him is created and produced by him. For that, it is clear why Islam prohibits portraying Almighty Allah and depicting him in stones and statues shape. Therefore, he has the right to be glorified. Question 8, Hindu, there are among Hindus who say that the purpose of worshipping statues is to focus and concentrate on worshipping God, what do you say about that? Answer 8, Muslim, that, statement, is baseless. I will explain it through this example. Imagine that a woman put another man's picture in front of her and she claimed that because she wanted to focus and concentrate on remembering her husband and his obedience so as not to forget what he commanded her to do. Will the husband accept such baseless and unauthentic claim? Surely, no because there is no relation between that and this even her husband will count it as a big mistake against his right. Also, what is the relation between the wrenched and fragile statue, made and carved from a weak creature, an almighty creator strong powerful God? There is no doubt that there is no relationship. Accepting such an unfounded and specious claim from the creature is an insult to the creator. However, that will lead to depicting God in humiliating images not worthy of his greatness and his majesty. That person portrays his God in such images and shapes and another man draws his God in other shapes. Each of them will also be proud of his and compare them to others gods and claims that his God is superior to others. This is a statue of a higher degree and it is greater than other lower degree statues. Thus, that cow is more sacred than other animals that he sanctifies. Each of them has different acts of worship depending on the whims and desires. Therefore, there is no evidence of such a statement. Question 9, Hindu, the Hindu religion sanctifies the cow and then forbids slaughtering and eating its meat, while we find that Islam allows butchery it and permits the eating of its meat and other herbivores animals. What is the view of Islam in that? Answer 9, Muslim, the cow in Islam is like other domesticated animals that the exalted almighty God created to benefit humans from their meat, milk, skins and so forth. If not, why do Hindus benefit from their milk without their meat? Let us consider how God created man and other creatures. If we look at the herbivores animals, including the cow, we will find that God has created flat teeth for them, not fangs, and thin intestines, not coarse. All to suit the pattern of their diet of herbs and so on. This is a clear indication that these animals are allowed to eat this type of food, herbs and so on, and feed on it. If we look at the carnivorous animals, we will find that Almighty God has created fangs and coarse intestines for them, all to suit the pattern of their food. This is a clear indication that these animals are allowed to eat this type of food, meat, and feed on it. If we look at the human being, we will find that Almighty God has created his teeth flat and with canine. He also created thin and thick intestines for them, all to suit the pattern of their food. This is a reference to the fact that it is permissible for a person to eat both types of food, vegetables and meat including beef and so on, except harmful meat that Allah has forbidden for him such. As the meat of the carcass, dead meat and pigs due to the dangerous diseases that they cause which are discovered by modern science.